Here's Brody Brazil. Are you a Giants fan who loved Matt Williams as a player? I mean, first off, every Giants fan should say yes to that. So since I'll assume that's your answer, then I'm here to suggest it's time for San Francisco to go out and secure Matt Chapman, who's a free agent right now. There's a lot of different reasons why he'd be a perfect fit. He'd be the third base king at third and king. He's got familiarity with Matt Williams, who's on the coaching staff. He played for Matty in Oakland. He played for Bob Melvin in Oakland. That's also a huge connection. I got to know Chappie and Matty Williams and Bo Mel all tremendously during their time in the East Bay. And crazy enough, they might all come back and realign in San Francisco. And I'm all for it. And I know Matt Chapman, the California kid who came up with the A's, played the last couple years in Toronto, would probably really love the opportunity to be back in California and to play for a manager who, quite honestly, he's almost got a father-son relationship with. Let's get into the basics here. Chappie is a free agent because he declined Toronto's qualifying offer of $20.3 million. There were also other reports that he turned down a nine-figure multi-year deal from the Jays. Maybe he didn't like it there. Maybe he wasn't working out there. Maybe because his agent is Scott Boris, he's always looking for the best deal possible. I don't know what it's going to look like for San Francisco to land Matt Chapman. We'll talk about the free agent market and other third basemen that would be out there in just a second as free agents. But Chappie's a free agent for the first time in his big league career. I'm excited for him. A four-time gold glove winner. Yeah, just won his fourth gold glove in the American League at third base. He's a prior platinum glove winner. I didn't even know that was such a thing until he won it. Was that 2018 or 19? A couple years ago. Uh, But he is so sure-handed defensively. And we'll talk about his offense in just a second. He hit 255 during his years with the A's, but only 226 in his last three seasons with the Jays. Last year ended up at 240 total for the batting average, but man, he raked in the month of April. It was every month after that where he struggled. But there are there are some intricacies to get into with Chappie's bat in just a second. Uh, some things I definitely want to point out. But let's go back to the Giants side of things here. Why him for San Francisco? And I'm also not here to suggest that the Giants should stop their pursuits of the Shohei Otanis and the other high-level, like real A-list prominent free agents that might be out there. That's fine. That's great. I'm saying do this absolutely in addition. If you need to build a strong team, Matt Chapman is the type of team player you want with your group. I really feel like he could be a possible cornerstone player in San Francisco across the next five to seven years. If you give him a deal that long, I think he's going to be happy there playing for Bob Melvin. Hopefully the team is on the uptick. Sure, he wants to win now. Sure, he wants to be in the playoffs right now. But so long as you put him with a good group, uh, you're going to get his best performance. And I really know he'll thrive with Bob Melvin and Matt Williams, a manager and a coach that he's played for before. And I really didn't get to elaborate on this at the top of the video, but I said if you like Matt Williams, then you'll absolutely love Matt Chapman. When was the last time, by the way, the Giants had a cornerstone corner infielder at third base? I mean, yeah, Pablo Sandoval, but before that, David Bell for a handful of years? I I think you almost kind of have to go back to Matt Williams, maybe, even before that. You're getting a player who could really make a difference over a long period of time, and, and the Matt Williams reference... Same type of personality. Could have some fun, good good teammate, good player to have in the clubhouse. But man, when they get down to business, so serious about what they're doing and trying to succeed. They really have that, that gamer mentality. Uh, Matt Chapman is an established clubhouse leader. There's no question about that. In Toronto, maybe he had to back off that a little bit, right? Because there are some other big personalities and there's a lot of other players there. But in Oakland, during his time coming up, I mean, there was no captain of the team, um, but I think he would be up there in the running uh, during those years with that group. I'll put it this way. Who was the clubhouse DJ? Who controlled the boombox? Who brought in the boombox? Matt Chapman, right? So a leader by example, a leader with his voice too as well. Wasn't afraid to to speak out when necessary. Love that about Chappie. And yeah, third base, an important defensive position 
They could use some stability. I mean, any team could use that, but I think the Giants especially, as they try to build a roster, uh, you'd be locking down third base on an every night, every day and every game basis. So let's take a look at the free agent third basemen that are out there uh, this year. Justin Turner, almost 39 years old, and what you're seeing is their age in blue and last year's salary in green. Longoria, Segura, obviously Chappie at 30 years old, <clears throat> Excuse me, kind of on the, on the younger side of this group. Uh, Isaiah Kiner Falefa is only a little bit younger. And same thing with Heimer Candelario, uh, just sub 30 years old. But you see the, the pay grade difference. And yeah, Chappie was at $12.5 million last year. The qualifying offer, I think the Jays made it at 20 plus, knowing that Chapman probably wasn't going to take it for just one year. So he would elect free agency. And because of that, if and when Chapman signs somewhere else, uh, the Jays will get a compensatory pick in the draft. So the bottom line is the Jays floated out the offer just so they could get something in return, knowing that Matt Chapman wasn't going to take a shorter deal. He wants something for the long term. And again, that's what San Francisco could provide. Why not go out and get your next third baseman for the next five years? Lock it away right now. He's 30 years old. These are the prime years of Matt Chapman. And obviously, we know about his defense. We know about the platinum gloves. We know about all the plays he can make in the hole. I mean, he's tremendous with the range and the arm. In fact, the arm buys him out. Um, of, I don't want to say of, of lesser range. That's not even it. But he can get to baseballs and have even an extra step, take an extra step because he knows his arm across the diamond can get it done. But I want to switch gears and talk about his offense. And we will look at the strikeout rate, which I think is the area for him to probably improve on. But look at the spray chart. And specifically, look at the home runs there in Magenta. Sure, there are some pull home runs to left field, a couple to left center. But look at all those home run balls opposite field to right field. And think about Matt Chapman playing at Oracle Park. High fence but short porch in right field. Uh, Very few right-handed hitters go opposite field and get the splash hits. Maybe Matt Chapman can be that guy. Maybe he can benefit from that jagged and obscure wall out there in right field. Is that obscure the right word? No, you know, it's different, right? Unique, detailed wall in right field. Uh, Triples Alley. Look at Triples Alley. Matt Chapman's got a couple homers out there, but he's got a bunch of doubles out there just to the right of center field. So this is a guy who's always had power opposite field. He can also hit for pull. Um, A good, a really diverse spray chart here from the 2023 season. Um, And here are his percentile rankings from Baseball Savant from last season. It's got the overall value. It's got the batting, the fielding, and the running. And sure, the running is uh, well above average, close to grade. But look at the fielding. I mean, it's close to grade in both categories. Now, I understand the chase percentage and the whiff percentage and the strikeouts are all not beneficial for where he's at. But look at the average exit velocity, 93.4. He barrels 17% of the time. 56% of the baseballs are qualified as hard hit. And obviously his traditional stats here are listed top to bottom. But you can see that when Chappie does make contact, he hits the ball well. And so for him, cutting down on the chase, cutting down on the strikeouts, probably the biggest deal right now. Has hit 240 across his career for average, on base percentage of 329, 155 homers, in about 3,500 plate appearances, 3,558. So a productive hitter. Don't get me wrong. I think it's, it's always been the deal with Matt Chapman that his defense and his glove work have been so off the charts that everybody assumes that, well, the hitting should come right along with it. It's not that easy. But if he can get back to a couple good seasons where he cuts down on the strikeouts and just does everything else, I guarantee he'll play right into the value of whatever contract he's going to get for the upcoming season. And I guess I probably should have qualified that from the very beginning. I know we briefly touched on it. What would the Giants offer him? What would he take? He's a Scott Boris guy. You know that's a difficult transaction and negotiate to land a free agent. Oh, we also kind of glossed over the fact that I photoshopped him already <laughs> into a Giants, Giants hat and uniform. I think, he, I think he'd look good there. Um, but the bottom line is that He's a player that just needs the offense to come around a little bit. He'll be comfortable under Bob Melvin and Matt Williams. I think all of these pieces fit for Matt Chapman 
to be a San Francisco Giant. This is the chance. And this is why you bring in a manager like Bob Melvin for a bunch of reasons. But how about this one? He's a magnet to good players who he's already managed or he's got a good enough reputation that quality players want to come play for Bowmel. And I'm let's just say this. I haven't talked to Chappie specifically about this, but I don't even need to. I know Bob. I've known Matty for a while, as in as in Williams, but especially Matt Chapman. I know this would be a tremendous situation for the San Francisco Giants. You made it here at the end of the video. You know I appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so I can definitely see you back here next time.